Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like this guy to my right from within the digital infrastructure industry. And this uh, this handsome guy to my right, this is John Sasser. John is the Chief Technology Officer for Sabi Data Centers. Uh, John, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so the show, going well for you? It is, yeah, quite uh, busy. Very busy, I, and I've been here uh, a few years prior. Um, it's never, it's, it's always been well attended. I can't remember the last time it was as crowded. Yeah, I think it has to do with the overall market, uh, just the be. amount of change and new technology, all that. Mm -hmm. So, um, John, let's talk AI uh, because it comes with its challenges, and those challenges have been well well documented. Um, but cooling being maybe the one that's the the one A challenge. Um, how is SABI addressing kind of those, the, 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 the cooling challenges within the data center? So we started transitioning to chilled water systems as our base design about four years ago, mm -hmm. and we've steadily increased the density. Mm -hmm. It's really air-cooled facilities that we can transition to supporting liquid cooling. Uh, we are in the process of starting to spec build uh, data centers that are intended for liquid cooling. Uh -huh. but e even then, it's it's not quite the same density that you see from uh, the 120 kilowatt racks because a lot of our customers are uncertain about how much air cooling they're going to deploy and how much liquid cooling they're going to deploy, sure. even in these AI data centers. So we're maintaining some flexibility to go high density and support air cooling in our data centers. We're also seeing a lot of customers deploying air assisted liquid cooling in legacy data centers so that they, they can take advantage of some of their liquid cooled servers uh -huh but do it in some of the legacy data centers. I got to believe that some of those legacy data centers, like retrofitting those data centers for tomorrow's you know, densities has got to be uh, a challenge in and of itself. Certainly uh, in an occupied data center. And that's why a lot of our customers looked for that air assist of liquid cooling, because yeah. with that, you can just buy the sidecar and the, and the server cabinets and not have to install chiller plants and CDUs and all that sort of thing, which is which can be quite disruptive. I, I imagine it can be. Um, uh, speaking of uh, disruption, uh, the the advent of AI uh, and the challenges that uh, go along with it um, are also creating some uh, some energy issues and some sustainability issues. And and you know the, the carbon footprint is uh, is also a well documented concern. How is SABI kind of addressing some of those more sustainability type issues? Yeah. So we've. We've always had a very heavy focus on energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. The average PUE of our data centers is around 1.2 compared to, if you look at uh, the Uptime Institute and the surveys they do, they say about 1.5. So we, we continue to focus on the energy efficiency piece. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's always key to sustainability. And then in terms of the energy sources, it's we're, we're looking at an all of the above approach. So we're, uh, we're located in Washington State. We have camps campuses and other locations as well. But Washington State is heavily hydro and uh, very progressive in terms of yeah. uh, greening up their electricity. Uh, in terms of other states, we're also looking at uh, nuclear, for example. Mm -hmm. So we have a memorandum of understanding with TerraPower to look at co-locating our data center campuses with nuclear uh, facilities. Uh, but it's uh, in the in the interim with the growth, there's probably going to be some natural gas for bridging. Uh -huh. And we're looking at how we can uh, do things like renewable natural gas and that sort of thing to green it up. I love it. I love it. And, and, and it really is about um, seeing what all of the options are and applying the best option for for the, the specific, you know, geography and things like that. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, because uh, solar is great in Texas. Uh, yeah. It may not be so great in Washington state where it's cloudy all year round. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I feel like that's the question we could have spent uh, all afternoon discussing. Right. Uh, but this next question is one of my favorites. And I'm going to make sure that I get it right. How is SABI ad uh, ad adopting its infrastructure to support the increasing need for localized data processing? That's not one that I, that's not a question I've had yet. Yeah. Uh, we don't consider ourselves an edge data center uh -huh. company, uh, but we do have data centers that are in high population areas. Mm -hmm. So for example, here in New York City, we have a data center in Manhattan uh, that is well suited for edge applications. In Seattle, we've long supported content delivery networks mm -hmm. uh, and you know that, that need to be close to those population centers. And so we have a campus just south of Seattle that, that is well positioned for that. So while we don't consider ourselves an edge data center player, yeah. we do have uh, data center campuses well positioned to support those. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes sense. Um, that to me, uh, 
sounds like the the smart <laughs> the smart way to go, to yeah. go about doing it. Making sure that uh, that you're providing what is what is necessary within those geographical uh, what is necessary to the communities uh, within those geographical regions as well. Yeah, and having the carrier base to help. Uh, it, it's important to have multiple carriers. We're carrier neutral uh, in our facilities so that uh, our customers that have those edge applications have a variety of different carriers to choose from. For sure. And uh, finally, uh, let's look at future trends, uh, innovations from within the industry, Sabi's place within uh, kind of moving those innovations forward. So we, uh, uh, we are trying different technologies as it relates to liquid cooling. We're learning. We're all learning as yeah. an industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we, we have the benefit that we have various customers taking somewhat different approaches. We learn from those customers. We learn from the engineers. They're able to learn from us. Uh, the, the technologies uh, keep evolving, keep getting bigger. Yeah. Uh, so we're, you know, there's more medium voltage uh Power distribution, uh, the 600 kilowatt uh, cabinet that was announced last week uh, from NVIDIA. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see. You know, people <laughs> yeah. are talking about one megawatt cabinets and it's like, okay, that how are we going to get the power to that? That presents uh, a set of challenges yeah. we haven't really even discussed yet. We, we haven't. And, yeah. and, uh, and it, you know, someone saying, I, I heard someone say yesterday, it's not coming out till 2027. I'm like, we're designing data centers that for feels delivery like in tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. And how are we going to get the power to them? Yeah. Uh, so, so it's uh, you know, I come to these conferences, and there's new CDU manufacturers yes. every every time that I come. There's uh, there's a lot of uh, AI applications that are targeting how do we operate these data centers better. So. There's a there's a ton of stuff out Isn't there. Isn't it interesting how AI is helping to solve the, its own the challenges it created itself? Well, and with some of the complexity that yeah. it's bringing, you almost think that it has to. It has to. Yeah. It has to be the it has to be the its own solution. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, John, that's another conversation, but yeah. maybe for another time. Let's do this again sometime, yeah? Sounds great. All thank right. you. John, Enjoy thank it. you. Thank you very much. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you very soon.